Okay, so we are finding LCD. And again, the way that we're practicing doing this is we're trying to find the lowest or the smallest number that have both of our denominators as a factor. The quickest, easiest way to do this, again, is to take the largest of your denominators. We're not really even worried about the numerators right now. We will be in the next section. But for right now, we're just looking at these numbers, the bottom numbers. Take the largest one. That means you'll have to do less work, less multiples to find the lowest common one. So we start with not 6, but 8. We're going to find 8, and we check every single time we have a multiple whether the other denominators divide it. So we're going to start with a multiple of 8. Does 6 go into 8? No. Actually, we have to go to the next one. What's the next multiple of 8? 16. Okay. Does 6 go into 16? No. Okay, we got to do another one. What's the next one? Does 6 go into 24? Yes. Yeah, you see, by taking multiples, you're automatically finding numbers that 8 divides. Automatically. 8's going to go into all these numbers. The first one that 6 also divides, that has to be your lowest common denominator. Since 8 already goes into it, and you're making sure that 6 does as well, 24, in this case, is our LCD. Did you find 24? Yes. Good. Okay, next one, 4 and 7. We're going to start with what number, 4 or 7? Seven? 7. For sure. 4 clearly doesn't go into 7, so we're going to continue. We'll do our 14. Does 4 go into 14? No. no. Okay. Then we got 21. Does 4 go into 21? No. Next up, we got 28. Yeah. Yeah. So 24 here, 28 here. Now, I'd like to show you something on why sometimes this process works. I'll show it to you. And other times, it doesn't. Can you look at the board for me real quick? Notice how when we got 28 here, what is 28 compared to 4 and 7? How would you get from 4 and 7 to 28? 4 times 7. Yeah. In, in this case, this is, if you wanted to find LCD, you would multiply those two numbers. You see that? But up here, it didn't work like that. If you multiply 6 and 8, you get 48. That's way bigger than 24. That's twice as big. Why, why here isn't, isn't just, it just isn't the, the multiplication of those denominators, but, but here it is? Say that one more time. Yeah, they are even. Did you guys notice that they're even? That means they have a shared factor. If you have a shared factor, that's already part of the puzzle piece. That's already part of your LCD. You don't have to multiply that in there again. You have counted that factor twice. So whenever you have shared factors, like 6 and 8, 2, bo two divides both those numbers, that means you're going to get smaller than just the multiplication of those denominators. However, if you look at 4 and 7, nothing divides both 4 and 7 besides 1. That means that you have no shared common factors. That means that our denominators, our LCD is going to be the multiplication of those two denominators. That's one way you can check that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, our last one up here, we have 8 and 12. Do we have a shared factor? Yes. Yes. Yeah? How, what's the number that goes into both 8 and 12? 24. 24 goes 24. into both 8 and 12? No. Okay, 4 goes into both 8 and 12. Two. Here's what I'll bet you. I'll bet you a million dollars that this happens, okay? I'll bet you that if you multiply these two numbers and you divide by their shared common factor of 4, you're going to get 24. That's what I'll bet, the LCD. And that's what happens when you have the common, the shared factor. You don't ha necessarily have to multiply both of these. Are we getting the common factor or no? We're going to get the LCD right now. Yeah. The LCD is not a common factor. LCD is not a common factor. There's two things we're talking about here. The LCD is the lowest common denominator. It is the multiple which both numbers share that's the smallest. That's LCD. A common factor would be a number that divides both those denominators. Now, what I'm telling you is that if you have a common factor, your LCD would not just be the multiplication of those two numbers. Here it was. There's no common factor. Here we had a common factor. It's not just 6 times 8. Here we definitely have a common factor. It's, eight. it's not going to be 8 times 12. It'll be smaller than that number. So when you have a common factor, it lowers the LCD. You don't just have to multiply those two numbers. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. So in our case, we'll still do it the same way. We'll still do 12. Does 8 go into 12? We check the next one, which is 24. Does 8 go into 24? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. As soon as we find that number, that's our LCD. Raise your hand if you're okay finding this LCD stuff. Good. Now, we've got to take this one step further. You see, we're going to use the idea of an LCD to make a fraction look a little bit different so that we can add it and subtract it. Because ultimately, we know we can't add or subtract fractions unless we have that common denominator. So how do we make up a common denominator? Well, that process is called finding an equivalent, say equivalent for me. Equivalent. Yeah, equivalent expression or an equivalent fraction. Equivalent means same value, but it looks different. Mm -hmm. 
Here's what I mean by equivalent fractions. If I give you this fraction, would you say those are the same value or different values? What do you think? Same. same. Why? Very good. So if I simplify this, which means divide by a number on both the top and the bottom, thereby equaling one, right? If I do that, it's going to equal 3 fifths. You all agree? So these are the same exact fraction. What I'm asking you to do now is instead of me just telling you those are equal, what I'm going to have you do is create your own equivalent fractions. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to give you some expression that says 3 fifths equals something over 10, where I don't know what the something is initially. I'm asking you to find it. So you have to think in your head, what fraction is going to be the same as 3 fifths, only instead of having a 5 down here in the denominator, I now have a 10. And here's how you figure this out. What you've got to ask yourself is, what number did I need to multiply by in order to get from 5 to 10? Because what we know is if we multiply the denominator by a number and the numerator by the same number, you'll have an equivalent fraction. That's the idea. So let's do that. What number do you have to multiply 5 by in order to get 10? Okay, multiply by 2. What that means is this. If I multiply the numerator by 2 as well, I'm going to get an equivalent expression. What is the 3 times 2? 6. Yeah, and that gives us that fraction we were just looking at. That's how you change one fraction into an equivalent fraction. Shall we practice some more of them? Again, I'm going to give you the, the whole, I'm going to give you everything but one missing piece. Your job is to find this missing piece every time, okay? That's what, what's going to happen here. You're going to find out in the next section that this missing, this piece right here comes from your LCD, and this missing piece is what we're always trying to find. We have 7 eighths equals something over 56. And again, our job is going to be to try to find this number. Now, I'll walk you through it. I'll show you how to kind of think about this. You start with the numbers you're already given. In this case, we're given a pair of numbers right here. So you ask, how in the world do I get from 8 to 56 by multiplication? What do you need to multiply by to get from 8 to 56? OK. That's the way fractions work. If you knew you multiplied times 7 to get here, we're going to do exactly the same operation on the numerator. You see, if we multiply by 7 on both the top and the bottom, we get automatically an equivalent fraction. So we multiply this by 7. How much are you going to get when you do 7 times 7? You know what? You can check your work. Simplify this fraction. It must give you that one back. That's how you check to see that you have an equivalent expression there. Does the same thing work? I have a variable. Oh my. Let's see. Let's see if we can still do that. Would you know how to get from the 7 to the 42? Yes. Sure. Times what? 8. Times 6. Times 6. As soon as you find that number, you're pretty much you're halfway done. Because all you got to do is take that times 6, do that to the numerator, and you will automatically have the equivalent expression. So let's. Multiply by 6. Can you tell me what is 3x times 6, please? Yes. Perfect. We're going to write that right up top. And you're done. That's your equivalent fraction. Like it? Yeah. We're gradually moving up to how to add and subtract fractions without common denominators that are already given to you. I'd like you to try a few on your own.
go. Why don't you give those a try? They go kind of quick. Once you get the hang of this. So we look at our fractions, we find out how you get from one denominator to the next by multiplication. We do that operation to the numerator, we have a new fraction. So in our very first example, I see 2 fifths into something over 15. I'm looking right here, I'm seeing that 5 times 3 is going to give me that 15. So I know that this is times 3. I do the same thing to the numerator. And I'm going to get 6 over 15. Did you get 6 over 15? Yes. yes. Good deal. Okay, next up, 1 fourth into 20, well, something times over 20. Five. Huh, what is that? Five. Definitely 5. That's going to give me how much? Five. Hey, check your work real quick, can't you? Just look at 5 twentieths. Make sure that's the same thing as 1 fourth. You know for sure those are equivalent fractions. How about 9x over 11 equals something over 44? What are we multiplying there? 4. So we multiply this times 4. Same thing on the numerator. Good. 36 what? Yes. Don't forget the x. Don't just give me 36 over 44. We'd be losing that x. Wait a minute. How about 4 into something over 6? You make it a fraction. How? Four over 1. OK, so we can do that. And if we consider this 4 over 1, we're definitely not finding out how 4 went into 6. That wouldn't even make sense, right? No. We're not going to multiply by 1.5. That'd be crazy. So we make this into a fraction. We find out how many times we have to multiply 1 to get 6. Well, of course, that's 6. And if we do that to the numerator, does it make sense that 24 over 6 equals 4? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah, we can do that. And lastly, oh, did you get this one? 4x yeah. into 36x. What do you multiply there? Nine. Yeah, no x's, because the x is already there, but sure. Nine. Hey, if the x wasn't there, could you have seen that you multiplied by x? For instance, if I covered that x up with my finger, you'd have to multiply by x there too as well. Would you see that? Yeah. Okay, good. So times 9 there. Times 9, how much are we going to get? 81. Would you raise your hand if you feel comfortable doing this equivalent expressions? Cool.